Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank uh, all of you uh, to gather here. And uh, I'm very happy to be in Bangkok again because uh, Professor uh, Terapong used to be my uh, former teacher. And uh, he's uh, gave me a lot of inspiration to uh, uh, the embryologies. So uh, I will stay here to share with you all information. Uh, before I start my, uh, my talk, I would like to uh, uh, fire you up uh, a question that uh, will you want to join in the science? Please raise your hand. Who, who of you want to join the science? Please raise your hand. So because my topic is about embryology, so um, you know what? I, I know that uh, most of you here uh, three quarters of uh, the audience uh, right now is uh, working in the uh, clinical aspect. So maybe this is a very, uh, um, is out of your aspect uh, actually. So uh, firstly, I, I want, want to talk and want to share with you my own experience. Uh, I've just uh, uh, pointed to have a chief embryologist with the, the new center and uh, the laboratory had to perform more than uh, 1,000 cycles per year. It's really huge. And we have to face for uh, the situation that we work with uh, uh, six to eight uh, clinicians. So you see that uh, how is my, my work, uh, uh, my lab my routine work is, is very huge. And we need to uh, change uh, um, uh, my strategies, uh, you know, every day. And at first, uh, we, we stuck in our obstacle that we cannot achieve the, the really high uh, pregnancy rates because, not because of uh, our laboratory performance, not because of the clinician practice, it's because of our communication. So on today, I would like to give you uh, this talk. And uh, this talk about the embryologies and uh, embryology technologies and I hope that I can give you some uh, uh, further information uh, from the S-Ray uh, meeting. So my, my talk will have four sections. The first section I will talk about the embryo and uh, the oocyte maturation. Uh, we will go on with the two uh, studies. Uh, the first study we look at um, uh, the prediction of uh, embryonic uh, development and clinical outcome. Uh, whether we, we see at the stages of nuclear maturation division uh, with the, the author from Japan. And another uh, study we look at uh, the assessment of uh, human uh, platocysts and its uh, association to uh, the ART outcome. Um, sorry, uh, the second uh, topic we will talk about the treating uh, mitochondria disease through ART. This is a very hard topic in s uh, recently because there's still a lot of debate on, on this problem. And uh, this topic is uh, to show you uh, the new technique to, uh, uh, to treat with the uh, uh, mitochondrial disease when we transfer uh, the cytoplasm, uh, we transfer the, the chromosome to uh, uh, the, the new uh, material. And the third part, I will talk about morphokinetic study, whether you can see a lot of data in uh, time-lapse uh, technology. And the system we use here is an uh, EVA system. Whether you see this is a correlation between the two studies. The first study will talk about the laboratory aspect, whether we see at uh, platocyst formation. And the other one we will see at uh, clinical validation, whether they, they can um, have any cor correlation to the model. And the uh, fourth part we talk about, I will talk about the metabolomics and biomarker. I'm sure that this is a very tough and very challenged uh, uh, part for you. And we will talk about um, two studies. The first study will, will be the com combination between the proteomics and uh, the time-lapse technology. Uh, the second uh, study will talk about uh, some factor uh, in the follicular uh, biomarker, fluid uh, biomarker. And this will uh, raise you uh, some uh, innovative uh, method in the future. So I will go directly to the first part. 
The first part is prediction the embryonic development and clinical outcome following ICSI according to the stages of nuclear maturation division. This is uh, the topic from uh, uh, the author Nagat Yoshi from Japan, and this is a fascinating uh, topic for you. The background is uh, when I work in the laboratory, you know what? The clinician come to my lab and do uh, the OPU. And after the OPU, they, they usually ask us a very simple question, few questions. That is, how many eggs that patient have got? Okay? And another thing is, how is the quality of the eggs? And the day we should uh, follow uh, for the transfer. And we, we need to provide the doctor on the answer. But uh, the rest of the job is based on uh, the activity inside the laboratory. And you see that when we, uh, after OBU, we need to assess on the oocyte maturation. And uh, regarding to uh, on the experience, we just look at the number of cell layer or the shape or appearance of the uh, OCC after we uh, retrieve from uh, the OPU. And uh, we see that some uh, pre-ovulatory uh, oocyte collect after the uh, OPU. Uh, some will uh, consider mature, but uh, when, when they extrude uh, the first polar body, and uh, we, after we uh, do the uh, denude, uh, denuding for the oocyte to strip out of uh, uh, the cell surrounded uh, the oocyte, and we will see clearly uh, the first polar body. However, the embryonic development uh, vary, you know, following ICSI. And uh, we see that the, the reason why, because of the stages of mature oocyte. And so the aims of uh, uh, this study is to investigate if it is possible to predict the embryonic development and clinical outcome according to the stages of nuclear maturation division. And this is uh, the retrospective study uh, they perform in uh, uh, 53 patients with uh, uh, 83 uh, cycle, and all the patients is under 38 years old. And uh, they perform for 211 oocyte, and uh, on the uh, uh, retrieval uh, under the control of uh, the antagonist and uh, XMZ uh, protocol, and the, the embryo, embryo have to be uh, cultured until they find, and uh, on the uh, chromosome of the oocyte have to be assessed uh, under the uh, inverted um, microscope, and uh, they use a very uh, special device that is the Nomaski optic. This is uh, the DIC optic, whether you, you can uh, uh, distinguish or uh, you can uh, identify the oocyte, you know, uh, in three groups right here. Uh, group A is the oocyte that had uh, the M2 chromosome arranged in two lines. The group B is uh, the chi of pro metaphase 2 because it's not yet arranged in two lines. And group C is a regular arranged chromosome. So uh, I will go to the result of this study. Uh, we look at uh, this table. We see that uh, the outcome of uh, the group A is uh, higher than uh, other groups, but it's not uh, significantly. Uh, but you see that the fertilization, cleavage, and platocyst pregnancy and miscarriage is a little bit higher than uh, other groups. Uh, so the conclusion of this study is when you identify the chromosome, uh, chromosomal uh, stages and you can adjust the pre-incubation, of uh, these oocyte, uh, you will have the potential of uh, the really good embryonic development and your clinical outcome uh, later on. So the use of uh, the M2, not yet at the M2, will cause you some uh, decrease on the fertilization, uh, blood cysts and pregnancy rate, and some irregular changes of the chromosome might be a sign of uh, nuclear degradation. So uh, with the clinical, out, uh, clinical uh, implication of this study is, uh, w whenever we find the prometaphase oocyte, we distinguish that. 
and we, we need to prolong the incubation until five to six hours. Uh, and this is good for your uh, ICSI outcome. So I will go with uh, the second uh, talk of uh, this first part. Uh, it's about uh, the assessment of uh, human platysis and its association with live birth rate and uh, neonatal outcome. This is uh, performed by uh, Dr. Thomas Ebner. He is a very famous uh, scientist on the uh, oocyte grading or even the platysis grading. He's from uh, Austria. And he uh, gave uh, the oral uh, presentation. So the background of uh, this study is, uh, as you might know, you, uh, whenever you culture the embryo until the platysis state, it's now uh, become more and more uh, common. And uh, uh, you see that because uh, a lot of the advantages of uh, uh, optimized uh, culture uh, media, we can use that. Uh, for uh, extended culture. However, you see uh, some drawback of blastocyst culture have been stated here. And the aims of this study is to uh, determine if uh, the, this assessment could allow uh, to predict the neonatal outcome, uh, such as the play, uh, placental and birth weight the live birth, the man formation. So this is the uh, prospective analysis uh, performed uh, within uh, 18 months. And uh, they did from uh, 254 platysis uh, in both the fresh and the, the frozen cycle. And all the, the platysis have to, to be at the full stage. I mean that the, they have the shape with the expansion. So the platysis were scored with the uh, ordinary uh, scoring uh, classification. And uh, that is the, the, the first one is expansion, inner cell mass and trophectodome appearance. And all of three parameters were quantified uh, semi-automatically uh, in parallel. And, uh, all the information of uh, the ART outcome uh, were recorded. So in the result, we see that, you see over here, all the dark uh, with the green dot is uh, the frozen one, and the green, uh, the green uh, dot is the frozen one, and the blue dot is the fresh one, and all the green one is over the line. And, all, and uh, the result say that, the birth weight, but not the placental weight, were significantly higher uh, for the singleton birth from the frozen uh, cycle compared to the fresh one. So I go to the next result, and we see here, this is the result to show that all of our uh, classical measurement for the platysis, uh, we remember three criteria and this is, did not uh, correlate with the placental and birth weight. And we see that maybe uh, we have other result. And in, the, in this study, he showed that uh, TE uh, quality and the cell number of TE uh, were significantly correlated with the implantation and live birth rate. And uh, surprisingly, <laughs> We can see that the TE quality associates with the sex ratio, and the male platysis were uh, 2.5, more than 2.5 times more likely to be uh, at the grade of A. This means that when you have the platysis uh, uh, embryo with the grading uh, upper than, um, you know, higher than uh, B, and you will have a chance to get uh, the, the male uh, platysis. So the conclusion of this study is the birth weight uh, was significantly higher uh, with the frozen uh, cycle. And uh, um, the decrease of uh, expansion ICM cray uh, and area did not correlate with the placental and birth weight. And uh, um, the third one is uh, trophectodum quality and the cell number were significantly uh, correlated with the rate of uh, implantation and live birth. 
and male platycis were more likely to be higher uh, to factor them quality. And what, I, what we could say for you that is, whenever we assess for the platycis, we will look at the trophectodum quality. The number of cells in the trophectodum will predict the higher chances if you want to choose uh, that kind of uh, embryo to transfer. And uh, I think that is maybe uh, replace, it will maybe replace the ICM uh, scoring in the future uh, if we look at uh, the, uh, the trophectodum. So I will go to the second talk. Uh, this is the, sec uh, the second part of my talk is, is treating the mitochondrial disease uh, through the ART. And this is a very fascinating uh, part in X-ray. And they, they have uh, uh, three to four uh, presentation, oral presentation. They show that all the theory uh, come to the practical things. And uh, I think if you, you guys come here, come there, and then you can observe all the information about uh, the nuclear uh, transfer as well with the mitochondrial disease. And uh, the study I show you here is uh, development of a new procedure. This is a new procedure. Uh, they call that karyoplast transfer for uh, the treatment of uh, mitochondrial disease. So the background. Uh, this study is um, mitochondrial disease caused by um, the mutation of the DNA, uh, especially with the, in the, the mitochondria. This is inherited uh, through the maternal uh, cytoplasm. So when, when the boy uh, was born, and he will inherit some uh, genetic uh, information from uh, his mother. And normally, when uh, um, the oocyte contain a lot of genetics uh, material. Uh, this oocyte, if fertilized and become the, the embryo, uh, the embryo will transfer or uh, inherited a lot of uh, genetics uh, in the mitochondria. And that's why you see, if the DNA in the mitochondria uh, was mutated, this will affect on the outcome or uh, the life of uh, uh, the baby, you know, uh, in future. So the radical treatment of this study is uh, they exchange the patient cytoplasm with uh, the healthy donor uh, material. So um, the problem of this technique is uh, when you transfer uh, the material, I mean that the genetics uh, material from one oocyte to another oocyte, it's not easy at all because when you transfer like that, you will have some excess uh, cytoplasm. It might be some uh, mutated uh, mitochondria uh, material in, in there. And uh, in this study, it's very, very good uh, concept. Uh, he, he tried to decrease the amount of transfer cytoplasm surrounded the M2 chromosome because he wanted to transfer the chromosome from um, the patient uh, oocyte to the healthy donor oocyte. And so this, uh, this procedure need to, to uh, accept for the transfer patient cytoplasm as the uh, minim, minimum level. So the aims of uh, this study is to, uh, to see if it's possible to decrease the amount of transfer cytoplasm to almost 0% to avoid only inheritance of mutated uh, mitochondrial DNA. So this is a retrospective study. Uh, to, they perform uh, uh, within four years, as you might know, right here. This is a very long uh, period. Uh, they perform for uh, uh, 25 mature uh, oocyte and uh, with the long protocol was used. And uh, they use uh, the technique with uh, karyoplast. They use two times. The first time, they aspirate the M2 uh, chromosome with the pipette uh, approximately uh, 10 to uh, uh, 12 micrometer. And then they aspirate with the smaller one with five to six uh, micrometer pipette. And the, the M2 chromosome was isolated, you know, safely. 
by checking the pipette. This is the, the type of uh, uh, similar, I think that some of uh, you guys here is embryologist, and you will know about the PSO uh, technique in Japan, and they use that kind of techniques. And by repeating this uh, uh, procedure, and uh, most, mostly uh, M2 chromosome uh, with spindle only could be isolated separately. And after then, they need to measure some uh, genetic material by quantitative uh, PCR to make sure that uh, there's no uh, less than the uh, number copy of mitochondria uh, material. So in the result, you see here, this is, this is not uh, significantly uh, with the number, but uh, the percentage of uh, uh, survival rate after the isolation is 100% for the first carrioplast and 92% uh, uh, of the second. And the fertilization, uh, cleavage, and uh, platocystic rate are very good with the uh, 65%, 73%, uh, and 27% respectively. So the conclusion of this technique is uh, the new techniques can decrease the amount of uh, mitochondria DNA uh, led to less than uh, 1%. So this technique is possible, and we can de decrease uh, the amount of transfer uh, cytoplasm to almost zero uh, to, to the, uh, in, in the woman that under uh, some treatment of uh, inherited mutated uh, mitochondria DNA. And this newly uh, developed procedure, I think that this is very crucial uh, techniques to use in future because um, I, I love the, the, the talk of uh, crystals because we, we talk about a poor responder patient. But this is the type of uh, um, laboratory technique to have with the, uh, the uh, poor responder patient because we, we seen uh, uh, to have a really poor oocyte maturity uh, and even the, uh, the number of uh, mitochondria uh, copy in the poor responder is lower than, than the normal, normal one. And maybe this is a very crucial technique to, to have uh, that kind of patient when we transfer. Because uh, in uh, uh, commercial now, commercial market, they provide a lot of uh, tool or uh, kit to inject uh, the excess on, you know, um, the, the, the mitochondria inside the oocyte. But I think this is the best, uh, the good way to uh, improve uh, uh, that uh, uh, drawback. So I, I will go to the, the third part of uh, my talk. This is about morphokinetic study. And you will have hear a lot of things uh, uh, from a time, time lapse. And uh, the first study is a retrospective validation of EVA uh, at uh, large scale. And so they, they will look at uh, the classification and uh, the plateau cyst formation rate. How is the uh, correlation between the two factors? So the background is, as you might know, uh, when we use uh, the time lapse, we need to look at a lot of uh, parameters, such as the time point of uh, the embryo cleavage the duration, the synchronicity, or uh, even we, we need to look at uh, further uh, changes or abnormality of the embryo. And in this study, they, they look at two parameters, the P2 and P3. The P2 reflect the, uh, the changes between two cell to three cell. The P3 reflect the, the, the embryo from three cell to four cell. And so uh, this model classify the embryo in three level. Uh, high, medium, low, according to the uh, probability of uh, becoming a plateau cyst. And uh, a few groups have tested the angotum. The angotum we need to suggest uh, after we, we test uh, on the parameter. And the aims of uh, this study is to correlate three predictive uh, classification, high, medium, low, with the plateau cyst formation and quality rate. So the study of uh, uh, study design is this is a retrospective study with uh, 332 uh, patients in a single center, and they conduct from uh, during the 2014, and uh, uh, they have 
uh, the sample is a 2,198 uh, embryo from the uh, USAID donation program. And they undergo the standard uh, incubator with the, the EVA system. They use the, the automatic cell tracking software to uh, uh, follow all the changes of cleavage of the embryo. So you see here, this is uh, some, uh, some uh, information about P2 and P3, but I think it's, it's, it's not uh, significant. So we look at the, the result of this study. Uh, among uh, 458 embryo, it means that tw nearly 21% of the embryo uh, they assess is not suitable for grading for uh, the software because I think this is uh, the problem of a uh, technical uh, issue. And uh, they, they seem to be that uh, uh, the plasticity rate is 59%. Uh, uh, it's really good rate to capture uh, all the embryo here. And uh, you see the result with the high, medium, and low. And uh, the re result simply decreased from high to medium and low with the plasticity rate the good quality rate, and the highest uh, rate is in the high uh, level. So in conclusion, this study say that uh, all results validate the ability to, uh, um, to object, uh, to, to see, uh, to predict the uh, uh, plateau cyst formation and support for, uh, for us to, to follow embryo selection. And this EVA test improve uh, our embryo selection uh, because they minimize a, all of our handling outside uh, the incubator. So we, we move, move to the next study. This is the, the next study uh, come from the same sample. And because they do uh, at the same uh, clinic, so uh, the same, sam uh, the same uh, patient sample, they, they did it. So the, the background of this study is uh, whether they uh, find the, whether they found the algorithm uh, design from 2010 of uh, Wong, and algorithm now it was used uh, to select the embryo uh, due to the automatic uh, time lapse uh, technology, and uh, they use uh, also two uh, parameter P2 and P3. The algorithm uh, classify the same thing as the, the previous uh, study. And the aims of this study is to, to, de to determine whether this is any uh, correlation between uh, this classification to the impl impl uh, implantation rate. So we move to the clinical uh, aspect already. So in, in the study, this is the retrospective study from a single center. This cohort uh, study uh, was conducted between uh, 2013 to 14, and uh, we, we see that we have the, the same number of uh, embryo was assessed, and uh, um, only 774 embryo were transferred, and we see uh, the uh, the implantation rates uh, after uh, the transfer. I mean that after the patient had the, tra uh, the, the embryo transfer, they look at the outcome and they try to connect uh, which one, which embryo was transferred and uh, they record the, the embryo at the, the CNO implanted the embryo. So in the result, we see the direct relationship between the classification and the implantation potential. And uh, with the distribution here, we look at only 28% uh, uh, reflect for the high uh, level. And uh, in the implantation rate, we see that the high level is uh, overweight, overweight to other classification. Uh, and this is uh, a little bit uh, significantly. So when we look at the day of transfer, we see that if we transfer on day three, and day five, okay, and uh, implantation rate is changes. 
is uh, completely increased from 45% to uh, 76% with the high uh, level. And with other groups we see here, it's increased as well. So the conclusion of this study is um, uh, this uh, model, you know, correlate with the, the implantation rate. And uh, uh, I will give you uh, the clinical implication if we, we can apply this. Uh, so the embryo selection uh, can be used uh, to support uh, with the two uh, para uh, parameter. And uh, this observed uh, relationship with the implantation uh, in, uh, potential reflect a direct link between the parameter provided by uh, this system and uh, embryo quality. So I will have a very quick question for you. Uh, has the, the introduction of time-lapse system improved your clinic's ability to select uh, better quality uh, embryos? Okay, please answer after the, the music. Okay, thank you. Wow, it changes. <laughs> oh, it's good. So we move to the fourth part, or the last part of my talk. This is about uh, metabolomics and biomarker. This is very tough and challenge. I myself, I, it's really hard to understand all, all the knowledge and information in, the, in this uh, part because it reflects you some of uh, uh, the biochemical uh, uh, problem and uh, issue, and you, you need to understand uh, some uh, you know uh, new terms in this field. So the first uh, study is a uh, new strategy to diagnose the embryo viability combining the proteomics and time lapse technology. This is uh, this is can uh, uh, understand that. Uh, this is just the combination between the time-lapse technology and proteomics uh, assay. So whenever we, we look at this, the background of this study is uh, because all the time-lapse technology, now you, you know uh, some uh, uh, information about time-lapse already. So I think that I move to the, the biochemical fingerprinting. This is uh, the, the very new aspect whether we, we can check or we can assess some uh, common inside the embryo span culture media. And this will show you a lot of information uh, within the, um, the correlation between the, the cell secret uh, outside or even the cell communication together. And so, um, although this is just experimental data suggests that it has a lot of potential but we can see uh, some information about this topic. So the aims of this study is to examine uh, the embryo viability by this tool and using the combination between the time lapse and uh, um, the biochemical fingerprint. So the study, uh, this is the retrospective uh, cohort study. Uh, they perform on uh, 17 USAI donor. And, uh, they uh, assess for, uh, they transfer for a 20A uh, embryo uh, in both uh, implanted and non-implanted. They, they try to assess some detail uh, on the embryo span culture media and morphokinetic parameter to see whether it uh, has any correlation. And we look at, uh, they look at the uh, 714 uh, in the embryo span uh, media right here. And I think that's uh, it's quite common and very popular when you see with the GMCSF. This is uh, the factor uh, we show, uh, we, we see that in uh, the implantation uh, um, you know, process. And uh, the data were combined with uh, the, some parameter in the time-lapse technology. This is the CC2, uh, the S2, and the T5. This is on the um, very popular par parameter in uh, time-lapse. And they uh, look at some uh, 
a statistic uh, analysis uh, later on. And in the result, we see that although uh, this is uh, in, in a blue, uh, blue color, this is uh, the implant, implanted uh, embryo, and the green one is uh, non-implanted. And we see that the present, um, presence of uh, uh, IL-6, I mean interleukin-6, and the CC2 uh, lead to significant higher implantation rates. And we see here 83% with IL-6 and 77% with CC2. And so we see the, the uh, presence or absence of uh, IL-6 and uh, the CC2 will affect on the embryo selection. And they, uh, they uh, suggest us a hierarchical uh, a classification for uh, four types of uh, the embryo. And we see here, if yes, with uh, IL-6 and no here, and we have uh, the four grading A, B, C, D, and implantation rates of uh, the A and B is more than 60% with this uh, model. So the conclusion of this study is uh, the presence of uh, uh, IL-6 and uh, the CC2 uh, present a higher implantation uh, rate than the embryo without uh, these two factors. And uh, the clinical uh, implication that uh, when, whenever we transfer the, the high quality uh, platocysts, we will raise the high chance uh, of pregnancy for uh, the patient. And when we combine uh, this time-lapse technology and protein mix assay, and we will improve our embryo selection by uh, minimize all the handling and monitoring outside incubator. So I will move to uh, the last part of my talk. This is screening the oocyte quality by uh, using some uh, principle of follicular uh, uh, fluid biomarker. This is very tough and very challenged uh, part of my talk. So the background is we found a lot of uh, uh, material or even the source in the follicular fluid. And this is available to see uh, if, uh, whether the, the oocyte quality uh, can be predicted. And in several studies, uh, published uh, seven, uh, recently, uh, to see a level of peptide in, in this uh, fluid, uh, we can know some endocrinological uh, function in, in, in this uh, fluid. And their value to predict the embryo quality is really high. So the aims of uh, this study is to investigate uh, if uh, this method can become the non-invasive uh, uh, in the uh, predictive biomarker for uh, oocyte quality. So the study, uh, they look at uh, 70, uh, 67 uh, uh, sample with the couple under the, uh, the IVF treatment. And uh, they, they try to divide into two groups, uh, fertilized and non-fertilized. And the peptide were extract and uh, uh, dilute in the, in the, uh, very, uh, in the acetine uh, nitrine uh, in wa water and evaluate by the liquid uh, chromatography and mass spect spectrometry. And this is a very, <coughs> Uh, very specific, uh, you know, bio, uh, biochemical uh, reaction. So in the result, we, uh, they, they, say, uh, they saw that a lot of uh, uh, important peptide, uh, they saw that a lot of important peptide in uh, uh, three groups, uh, but of all the peptide, 23 uh, peptide were confirmed by all three groups here. That means that uh, at the same time, three uh, training groups, they, uh, they look at uh, all the peptides and they, they look at and they found the same, the same you know, uh, list of uh, uh, the, the peptide. So in the conclusion, they see a set of 23 peptides could uh, distinguish the fertilized oocyte and non-fertilized oocyte. And uh, this technique uh, could uh, identify the potential biomarker for oocyte quality uh, in, in future. And uh, with the clinical implication, 
I think that uh, peptide profiling uh, in uh, individual uh, follicular fluid sample could give us and uh, support us a uh, new innovative and uh, non-invasive approach uh, to predict the oocyte quality even the fertilization in IVF practice. But uh, further investigation need to uh, study. So in, in uh, summary of my talk, uh, I would like to uh, summarize something. With the embryo and uh, oocyte maturation, we will look at uh, two studies. The first study, we'll, we will see the prometa phase two oocyte need to prolong the incubation uh, before ICSI uh, about uh, five to six hours. And uh, with the uh, platocyst grading, and we will see the, the most important factor is a trophectodum uh, value. Um, with the second uh, part of my talk is uh, treating mitochondrial disease. Uh, and we will see that the, the techniques, the new techniques is uh, um, cytoplast, can, uh, uh, can, uh, can, can, can be useful for, uh, avoid, for avoiding some uh, mutated uh, my, mitochondrial DNA. In the third part, uh, we will see the two relevant, uh, relevant uh, study. They, they, they did at the same uh, sample, but uh, the outcome is different. The first one, is they see that uh, this test is, uh, could improve the embryo selection. And another uh, study, they see that uh, there is uh, the very useful uh, clinical uh, implication in, uh, in future if we, we can use this uh, system. In the, the last part with the metabolomics and biomarker, and we see two uh, studies. The first one is a combination between the time lab uh, parameter and uh, uh, some bio, uh, some uh, metabolomics uh, uh, marker. And the last one, we will see some uh, peptide profiling. This is the new and innovative and non-invasive uh, uh, approach to predict the uh, embryo, uh, the oocyte quality, and maybe is very helpful for you in future. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>